Mashiach Teke Rebetzin, that despite everything that's going on at home, you chose to... Now, this is being recorded, Sarah. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Menucha. Hi, Menucha. Welcome on board. And thank you. Okay, so I believe that we're going to honor everybody that is here on time. And we want to welcome all of you wonderful ladies that have come to, that have joined us tonight on the second Tut Alts Zoom event for women. And like my dear cousin, Sarah, I would like this to become a real Hasidic Shefa bringing a back and forth. Yes, we're going to be learning um, and going through a Sikha, but this is uh, a conversation. And we invite you into our um dining rooms, living rooms, to learn, have a cup of tea, and to learn a sicha together. Just want to tell you a little bit about um, the background of tonight's event and um, what this is all about. This, uh, this year, the Mashiach Office of America's 302 has created a six-month program specifically geared to women, for women, each month focuses on another sikha from Tav Shinon Beis, in which the Rebbe teaches us how we can live with a Geula mindset now. This month specifically focuses on the sikha of Shemais, Tav Shinon Beis. And in addition to all, to the sikha that we're going to be learning, we're going to introduce something quite incredible that the Mashiach office has prepared for each and every one of us. It's a unique program for women called Event in a Box. So if you are part of the Sheikh Chabad, if you are, if you have um, any women's programs going on, you can always incorporate the incredible um, detail-oriented um, program that the Mashiach office has prepared for you, which includes a 65 page curriculum by JLI and Sikhs in English, based on the Sikhs of that they have chosen for the month. A Dvataira sheet that you can share with your family, um, either by an event um, around the Shabbos table um, or on any of your events that you're going to do. Once you learn the Sikha, Implement, in, implementation cards that ask you questions that help you implement what you have learned into your everyday day. So that's really quite incredible. A customizable event program and flyer. So if you are um, um, organizing an event and you want people to come, they will help you plan it properly, give you uh, an, uh, 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 help you make the program, give you a flyer, customize the program, the flyer for you, give you decor ideas that if you just click onto their links, they have amazing ideas of what coloring you will use, how you, how you, what you will, how you will decorate your tables, your walls, etc. And a beautifully done video, which will give you a synopsis um, of the Sikha that will give you perhaps even a, a prelude to be able to understand where you're going and what you're doing. And it's so simple. All you have to do is register on tutalts.com forward slash women to receive your event in a box virtually. It's free. doesn't cost you anything. If you wish to receive their printed booklets, which are beautiful, and you want your Chabad house or your Neche Chabad or whatever event you're doing to be to make it customized, they will do it for really a very, very minimal rate. Um, and they will send it to you in the United States. Here we are. They'll show you how you can actually um, look at this video so you can see how you can sign up. So this is so simple, 
tutals.com forward slash women. You can see it more in detail. And it is very, very simple for you. I just want to make a mention that this program has been generously sponsored in memory of Mrs. Reza Bovosti, Ola Shalom. So everything, you. There, you know, it should be for the elevation of her holy neshama. And um, I urge you to take advantage of something that is so well prepared for you. All you have to do is tap in and print it out on your own or get the hard copies. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce to you today um, a very well-known, famous, um, intelligent um, uh, lecturer on various uh, issues, specifically on mikvah. She's been a college teacher for many, many years, I believe over 25 years, a mentor to so many, a teacher in base Rifka, gives her heart, her soul, and her life to the public, and um, has, has graceful, uh, graciously agreed to join us tonight and teach us the sicha, teach us the sicha of Shemais, Tav Shinun Beis, um, help us understand how we can bring it home to, um, to actually to our homes, to our life, to our families, and help create that Mashiach Dikim mindset that we're all craving to, um, to feel, live, and breathe. So, just for you to um, get a little bit of this um, idea of what Sarl is about to teach, we'll show you a two minute video, which will help you give you a little bit of a background history so that you can follow along as Sarla will um, um, give us a little bit of her knowledge uh, based of course on the Sikhs of the Rebbe. It was the period after the destruction of the second base of Mikdash and a new Nasi was appointed in the great yeshiva of Yavne, Rabbi Elazar ben Azaria. In the base medrash, he leads his first discussion, opening with the teaching of Ben Zayma, interpreting the Pasuk about the obligation to remember leaving Mitzrayim at night as well as during the day. The Chachamim interpret the Pasuk differently, that the obligation is to mention the leaving of Mitzrayim not only by day, not only by night, but even in the era of Mashiach. There is a powerful lesson behind these teachings. The daily experience of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, one's personal freedom from restrictions and limitations in daily life, is possible not only in the daytime when the light of godliness shines bright, but even at night, in the dark moments when godly reality is concealed. Furthermore, teach the Chachamim, not only can a spiritual Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim be achieved in the darkness of Golos, but one can even tap into the divine reality of Yemois HaMoshiach. Living that era now. On that very same day, the doors to the base medrash are opened wide to all who wish to enter. Even one whose mind and heart are still trapped in the darkness may enter the holy hall of study and tap into that divine reality. <laughs> Und das wird getan werden und er wird dann noch um den Punkt nehmen, einzeln in dem Lachli, wie Moschich wird schon kommen, und dann noch wie jeder Ried bringt alle Jemesa Moschich. The Nasi of each generation has served this purpose, inspiring hearts and souls, no matter the darkness they may be struggling in, to cultivate the spark of divine redemption within the Golos to live Geula. Wow. 
I think that we all got a little bit of a taste of what we're going to be learning. I invite you, like I said, it is a Fabrengen. I invite you to open up your cameras if you wish. So it'll be easier for um, Sarla giving over this lecture to just feel like she's in your, you know, with you together in a classroom. And it's just, a, it's just much easier to give over the class. But again, it's, uh, you're free to do what you want. I'm going to, um, as we as we ask Sarla to take it away, just want to ask Sarla a question that is uh, is interesting for me, my dear friend. I listen to you all the time. I hear you on mikvah.org. Your classes are brilliant. It helps me teach my kalas. It helps me learn. And uh, and I'm wondering, um, here is you took upon yourself a very bold uh, um, task to teach a sikha on Mashiach. It's something, uh, a, new, a, a, a new trend that you're going, but I applaud you. And I want to know what in the world um, made you even agree to do this as such a busy woman with such so much on her plate. And uh, I just uh, was wondering about that. <laughs> um, so to tell you the truth, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shivering the whole day. <clears throat> but uh, tell you the truth, I uh, was like um, to study the, these sikhs, not, I didn't, I was, those years, we were in Tashan Av, Tashan we were living on Shlichas, so I wasn't here, I wasn't in New York, Shabbosim, so I didn't hear those Shlichas um, straight from the Rebbe, but we would definitely, as soon as possible, we'd get the synopsis, and then the Rebbe's edited Sikha would come, and we'd learn them. So I was like, they, they were, Mamash, a breath, breath of fresh air, we all lived a Mashiach, like a life, any minute Mashiach would be revealed, it was wow. And uh, after Gimel Tamos, we still had the continuation of the, uh, of those feelings for a while. Now, as life went on, years passed, and I realized after, unfortunately, too many years that I wear glasses, but the way I look at the world is all about marriage and Taras Mishpacha and Mikvah. Like everything I learned was always connected to marriage. Every chitas, say for mitzvahs, whatever it is, a sikha, always, it was all, and I realized, hey, years passed, and my the whole Mashiach, like a flavor, I like, just left. Like, I'm, I'm just, I'm not really living with that Mashiach, like a flavor. Like the Rebbe, the Rebbe wants us to do, and and if you don't learn, it doesn't affect your behavior. So it must have been about ten years ago. I don't remember. I made a chlata on Gimel Tamos that this year I'm going to review all those sikhs in the inside and an and base. And I, I Friday night or Shabbos, I would not pick up any other reading material, which was quite enticing for me to relax. You know, you read this and that, but I had this strong chlata that I must get back on track. And some of the sikhs were quite hard. We did not have the English translation or the tut alts and all these beautiful videos or whatever to help us get the point. I really was struggling, but I worked really, really hard. And Bar Hashem, I went through the entire year and a half and it made such a difference and an impact on my daily living, uh, on the atmosphere, my attitude. And, and unfortunately, as years passed, because I didn't keep up with it, you know, you backtrack and you lose that flavor and you lose that feeling. So when the Tooth Alts campaign began um, this new venture, which I applaud tremendously, I made it so user-friendly and I was asked to do it. I said, great, let me jump into it once more because it's, it's not a luxury. It's a necessity to jump into it, to start at any point. And we have to live Mashiach Dik. We have to learn those sikhs to really absorb and understand what it means to live Mashiach Dik and how to do it. Now, I picked up the sikha and believe me, like it's not something I normally teach. I never taught this before. I don't even know if it's going to come out smoothly. Of course, I asked her for a bracha and I hope I have that bitul. And I just want to use it as an example. Like life doesn't have to be perfect, but in our, everyone in their little way could learn something. And that's why I asked my cousin Suri, like, I don't want to come here and give a speech because I hope I'm, I'm going to give over the sikha correctly. I don't even know. I'm not like such a bucky in this type of sikhas and the nuances or they meant this or I meant that. Like I just kind of take it at face value. But for me, the step of making it real of how I'm going to take this message and connect it to my everyday life for me was the most important part. So um, can I say here? something, Sarala, as you're talking, uh, a memory comes to mind and I want to help you say that whatever you're going to do is going to be perfect and beautiful. But in Tavshin Chai, that's 1958, my father-in-law, Rabbi Label Raskin, Allah Shalom, was in charge then of organizing that Bachram should go to Shul's to teach the Sikhs that the Rebbe spoke. 
And they were very fortunate that they gave in a sicha. They said that they have to teach it right. So they would like that the Rebbe should be Magia the sicha. And that way they'll be able to teach it correct. And the Rebbe did, in fact, um, what he was Magia the very first sicha. So the Bachram was so excited. This is unbelievable. The Rebbe is looking it over and then they can go and teach it in the shuls. So they gave in a second sicha. This time, Rabbi Chadakov called in my father-in-law to his office and he said, what do you think? Vostacht. There's 800 letters sitting on the Rebbe's desk. It's Bekoach Nefesh. And you want the Rebbe to stop and be Magia the Seche? And he's thinking to himself, this is Rabbi Chadakov. Maybe the Rebbe asked him this question and he's it's giving over because we know the Rebbe Chadakov asked a question. It could come from the Hechef fences. <coughs> But he had the, the foresight and the strength to say the following. He said, to be magia asiche is also pikoach nefesh. And these words went to the Rebbe, and the Rebbe accepted it. Thus began the Lakute siches. This is the beginning. Today, what you're saying, that it's a breath of fresh air, it's more than that. It's pikoach nefesh, mekenish leben on them. And it helps us see um, the world from the Rebbe's eyes. So take it away. So um, the, sikha, the sikha begins, uh, Pasha Shmois, the sikha begins with... Um, We're going to ask everyone to please mute themselves. So the sikha begins um, that in the beginning of Pasha Shmois, um, in, in the Torah, it says, Yisrael, these are the names of the Yidin that entered Mitzrayim, and the P Pasuk actually lists the names of the 12 Shvatim, Reuven, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda. So obviously we have a, a question, why do we have to list that the Shvatim entered Mitzrayim? We know that the Shvatim came to Mitzrayim. It's redundant. Why list them again? And there are offers two answers from the Medrash. The first one is the one that is the subject of the Sicha that we're going to expand on. And the Rebbe says as follows, that the Medrash says that the names are listed not just as names, but every the, the um, meaning of every name is connected to Geula. And say it, listing those 12 names, is the it means that when they entered Mitzrayim, they're entering the Al Shem HaGeula. They're entering the Geula state. Of course, right away, the Rebbe asked a question. Uh, we're entering Mitzrayim. We're entering the first Golos, and the Golos lasted up until today. And when the Medrash says that we're entering the Gula state, it doesn't only, it's not only the Gula of Yetzirah Mitzrayim, it also refers to uh, Yemaisa Mashiach. How could it be the first, when they stepped into Golos, the, when they stepped the first time that the Eden stepped into this deep dark, the deepest darkness of Golos, that first step is a step of Mashiach. It's a contradiction. How could it be? So the Rebbe, the, um, the, the Sicha goes on in different ways, but I, I, I think it's important to understand that two weeks before that, Parshas Vayigash, there was another Sicha that gave uh, a, a very important background to be able to understand what the Rebbe says here in the Sicha Parsha Shmais. So uh, a few minutes, I'll give a little synopsis and then we'll move on to the current Sicha. And there in Parshas Vayigash, um, just I'm gonna uh, just one little selection. The Rebbe brings about the story of Purim that it, the, in Achashverosh, when he prepared the party, it says that he ish. He wanted to give everybody at the party everything what they wanted. Everybody will will get their needs met. And the measure says ishva ish. Amar Rava Rava says Achashverosh wanted to please or complete the needs of both Mordechai and Haman. Mordechai is called Ish, because it says Ish Yehudi, Haya B'Shushan Bira, and Haman is called Ish, Ish Sarva Oyev. So Kertzoy Ish for Ish is a reference that Achashverosh is trying to fulfill the needs of both Mordechai and Haman. Now, the Medrash continue, continues on this. This is an impossible feat. Because Mordechai is one direction and Haman is the complete opposite direction. Uh, Mar and the Rebbe explains later on that Mordechai, his whole chayas, his whole life was invested in doing Ratzon Hashem. And he didn't bow, he didn't bow, he didn't submit himself to anything that's foreign to Hashem's will. Versus Haman was the exact opposite. His whole life's mission was Avoida Zara, to do anything. 
to upgrade and give chayis and koiches to any value that's foreign to the Eibishter. So they're in two opposite directions. And the mushal that the Medrash gives is that you have two ships who want to sail, and they're both at the same place in the ocean. And one wants to go to the north and wants to have a north wind blowing, and the other one wants to have a south wind blowing. It's impossible in Gashmis of this world to have two winds blowing at the very same time. So the Medrash offers some solutions, and the one that we're going to work with now is, the Medrash says, when Mashiach will come, Hashem will create a type of wind that can blow in all directions at once. And with, when Hashem enters the picture, we could solve this issue, and the needs of the north and the south, the different winds could all merge together and work at the same time. And then there explains, what, what does this mean in our everyday life? Hashem put us in, in a golos. Hashem put us in a place in the way of nature that there's limitations and there's constraints and there's confinements and there's struggles and there's nisyanus and there's so many things that stand in the way of serving Hashem. This is our reality. Hashem himself put us here. And the voice of Haman will say, Hashem put you in Olam Hazah. Hashem put you in an everyday. Hashem put you in the struggle, in this trauma, in this dark place, in this Golos. You have to live the way of Golos. And Mordechai comes and says, we have to do Avaitis Hashem. We have to surpass and we have to surmount and we have to work around. And we, each of us, have to live a life that's totally connected to Hashem's values and Hashem's vision. How do, how do we do this? How do we do this? Is by connecting to something higher. Because we're not human beings that are submissive and subservient to the ways of nature, because Ayid, we don't just have one, one part of us, a nefesh of Ahamis. Ayid is a nefesh of Kis. We have an innate connection to the Abishter, and the Abishter is higher than nature. And if we reach higher and connect to the Abishter, then, then we have the Koyach that in this very dark moment and in this struggle and in this Golos, we could find the Abishter and bring the Abishter's light and the Abishter's way of life and the Abishter's path every moment, every day. So it's, it, we're not running away from Golos. Our Golos is a reality, our life, every one of us. Um, the Rebbe there mentions that the, it's really, this is a void of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. And this, that we're going to move on to the Sicha Shmois. The mitzvah of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is a mitzvah we have to remember every day. And we can ask, well, what does Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim have to do with today? I mean, it was a historic moment years ago. What does it mean Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim today? Bechol Dar, Bechol Yem Vayoyim. And we say in Krishma, the mitzvah of Krishma, the third parasha, is to remind ourselves of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, one of the sheis, the chiris, is to remind ourselves of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. It's a reminder that a yid is above limitations. Mitzrayim could be external limitations that we live in a lot. We, in the past, Jewish history, you didn't have lived in countries where they didn't allow Jews to practice Judaism freely. The Rebbe said nowadays, we hardly have that. Those limitations and those struggles aren't from outside. Our Nisoyin is a little different. We have Nisoyinus, we have, we have Nisoyinus in, in struggles within, the way our mind thinks, the way our heart feels, that we feel that confinement and those limitations of a goalless mentality. Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is that we have the kayach in our everyday life to rise above those limitations, to break those barriers and find a moment of connection to the Eibishter. Because what does it mean, Mashiach? What's going to happen in Yemaisa Mashiach? In Yemaisa Mashiach, what does it mean? V'nigel k'vayd Hashem. Hashem's shechina will be revealed, that Hashem will be our reality. When we look around, we're not going to see trees and tables and chairs, we're going to see the Koyach of the Eibishter, Hashem himself will be revealed. That's going to be our reality. We don't have to wait for Mashiach to come in order for that to happen. If we connect to the Eibishter and start looking at this world with Hashem's eyes, we have the Koyach in the darkness of Golos to make Hashem real in that little space and in that little moment. And every action and every deed and every thought that connects the Eivishter back down to our current reality is a Mashiachtika statement. So that is the background. How could it be that when we're going into Golos, we're actually starting the Avoida of Mashiach? Because Mashiach is not something of the future. The future will be the end result and we'll see it all. But right now, from the moment of darkness, when, when, when we're in the deepest of darkness and we choose, instead of being sunk into it, and forget of Hashem's existence or Hashem's message, 
we choose in the moment of darkness to bring Hashem's light in this little space and in this little time, we're ushering in right now the idea and the concept of Mashiach, that real moment now turns into a Mashiach like a moment. So are you suggesting that we live that paradox now? And can you give us some, you know, this is all beautiful that say that we're living, but we, let's have some practical examples of how one can implement um, this Mashiach mindset now in, despite what we see, because some of us feel that we're in a very dark place. Some of us are going through difficult moments and we might feel like we're in a dark tunnel. How do we bring this Mashiach, the mindset, like the Yidin that went into Mitzrayim and at this, they're going down to Mitzrayim and Meret being Mashiach. So first of all, um, we're, we're soon going to uh, forward, one second, hold on. <coughs> we're soon going to forward, that's fine. We're soon going to forward because we have to mention um, one little piece um, that the Rebbe continues to mention. Is it okay if I can continue and then answer that question? With pleasure. It's very Go important ahead. to mention. The Rebbe right afterwards in the Shmoy Sicha, before even the Rebbe resolves the question of how when we go into Goas, it's already the first moments of Goa. The Rebbe actually it starts another topic, and that is, and this is a piece of the Haggadah that the Rebbe mentions, and that is that the day that Rebbe Lazar ben Azariah became the Nasi, he says, I'm as if I'm 70 years old, because we all know that he turned white, so that he should look as if he's 70 years old. And soon we'll discuss what does it mean that the Nasi is, why is it so important that the Nasi is 70 years old? And he says right away that um, he was waiting the whole time there was a question that he had, and only today, the day he became Nasi, he was brought to the realization that answered his dilemma and his question. And his question is, how do we know that the mitzvah of mentioning Yitzhak Mitzrayim is also at night, not only during the day? Until now, we know we say Shema during the day. But he, he knew with reality that we have to say Yitzhak Mitzrayim also at night. So that's the day he said that Ben Zayma explained from the Pasuk, because the Pasuk says, that we have to remember Yitzhak Mitzrayim all the days of our life. The word Koyal is seemingly extra. We have to remember, we have to mention Yitzhak Mitzrayim all the days. The fact that it says Koyal teaches us Lahavi Halelois. It includes that not only do we have to mention Yitzhak Mitzrayim during the daytime, but we also have to mention Yitzhak Mitzrayim at night. But Rachamim said a different explanation why it says the word koyo. Kol yemecha yecha is while we're in Goas, Oyum Haze. Kol yemecha yecha, that word koyo means lahavi, which could either mean to include or to bring for, forward Yemaisa Mashiach. So we see that we have to remember the concept of breaking our barriers, breaking our limitations, going out of that ghost mentality and confinement that limits us to feel connected to the Abishter. We have to do it in three, three levels, the daytime, the nighttime, and also what does it mean by day? When things shine, life is good. So sometimes we're on cruise control, life is good. I have my connection to the Abishter and everything's, everything's nice. But Ayid is never on cruise control. We always have to do more. If, if today was good, tomorrow we have to do even better. We have to keep going out and digging deeper and digging deeper and expanding Hashem's reality into this world, both within, in ourselves and in our surroundings. We connect to one more yid, to one more mitzvah, one more concentration and davening, one more, oh, it, hit, it hits me. One more Hashkacha Prata story reminds me of Hashem right here. I could tell you later that today, as I was trembling and trembling for tonight, believe me, uh, Hashem showed me two Ashkocha Prata stories. And I realized right away, aha, first of all, you open up the Hayyam Yom of today. It's the exact message of the Sicha, Mamish. Uh, maybe we'll read it soon. And then right before I came here, the De Hair magazine entered my house. I opened it up. And there's a story, Pump, that my father said exactly with the message of the Sicha of, um, of the Yidin going down to Mitzrayim and their names. Maybe we'll mention it later. And this for me was a Mashiach like a more moment. Here I'm, I'm wondering, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the wrong thing? Here the Abishar, you put two and two together. Look what the Abishar is showing me with open eyes. I, this is the right thing. This is the Mashiach moment. So that's when things go right. 
when things lay lies, when things are dark, there's a trauma, there's a struggle, there's an isoyin, a health issue, a, 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 a financial issue, a nachas issue, whatever it is, Hashem created dark moments. Not chas Hashem to limit us from feeling connected to the Abishter, but the opposite. If we step back and say, Hashem is right here with me, Hashem created this, how can I bring light into this dark moment? How can I learn from this dark moment, maybe to help another Yid? How turning it around and using the goals that we're in and stepping back and say, okay, now we're going to think Mashiach What does the Abishter want from me? How could I bring Hashem's light into this situation? Like I had an idea, I was thinking, you know, like we learn in Chassid, we learn, you know, from Arabayim that originally Matan Torah was given, you know, in one area of the world. And the, the Halukite, the Lichtakite, and the Kedusha was absorbed in the atmosphere of one part of the world until it says the Friedrich ever came or the Eden came to America, Chatzik Kadar I mean, it's Yutshva, so we want to. Uh, focus more on, on the fear of the they're bringing Yiddishkeit to a whole new section of the world, and then Yidden spread throughout the world, because in every single place, we have to bring Getkochkeit in that, in that uh, situation. And we have Baruch Hashem, Batei Chabad, all over the world, um, one after another after another, bring, bringing out the sparks of Kedusha and connecting the Abisha to every single place. The same thing, besides every single place, Hashem gives each of us in the length of our times, in our, we have br- days, we have bright moments, and then we have different, many, many different situations. Hashem gave you one situation and you another situation, and this one another situation, another one another situation. And the void is to bring out the reality of the Asian every situation. And we see this in so many different ways. A simple way, look, how could I close my store on Shabbos? In the way of nature, this is the busiest day that I can have the most business. This is, I'm living in a Golos, I'm living in a, in a country that Shabbos is the bu- busiest shopping day. It doesn't make sense for me, for my Parnosa to close my, my store on Shabbos. It can't be that Hashem gave me a mitzvah to stop working on Shabbos when I want to support my family. That's a Golos mentality. You step back and say, Hashem is the one who owns the money. You do it Hashem's way, Hashem will send you a bracha and the money that you have. Or if a girl will say, how could I get married? What, after a two, three month engagement, do I know him well enough to get married um, and to get have a baby right away, to get pregnant, it's gonna defer my shalom bias. You step back and say, who created the system in the first place? Doesn't Hashem want you to have shalom bias? Hashem wants you to have shalom bias more than you want to have shalom bias. And if Hashem created this system, it means this is the best for your shalom bias. Because who made, who made the system in the first place? That's the idea of Mashiach here. Instead of looking in the, the, the ways of nature and with human eyes, how things work in the ways of nature, we have to remember, again, like the Haman and the Mordechai. There are two voices here. How do I know which is the right perspective? How do I jump out of this restriction of thinking? Everything has to be scientific. Everything is based on statistics. Yidin are higher than science. Yidin are higher than nature. Yidin are higher than statistics. This is the Yashmita, right? How could it be? Could you imagine if Hashem tells you for the entire year, don't go to work? I'll give you parnasa. We have to step back and realize the Abishar is the one who gives us parnasa. Like we could come to think it's my, with my efforts, I'm the one who's doing all this. And Abishar gives us an opportunity to say, step back. I will show you that I'm in charge of your money. I will give a blessing in your crops. And you'll see that I'm the one who's in charge. It's just another reminder that even though there are certain mechanics that we have to go through, because Hashem put us in Olam Haza, we're not owned by those mechanics. We're not subservient to those mechanics. They're a way of life that we have to go through, but we are higher than that because we have a connection to the Abishter and the Abishter is the one who dictates um, this mentality that Hashem exists in every space and in every time and in every action and in every choice. Whoa, I, I, I talked a little too much, sorry. Did I answer the question? I forgot even what the question was. I, I, w- w- you're asking us, you're, you're introducing, um, based on the Sikha, that we need to live in a paradox. So you're explaining that, Bechlal, you know, we have a Nefesh of Bahamas, we have a Nefesh of the Kis, so we already have the, we have, we have the tools on, and the Abish is ultimately in charge. It's very nice. It's all very nice theory. It's beautiful words. It's very... You gave a few examples, but you know, a woman is when she's going, if she's in her dark moment right now, what does she grab onto? She needs to grab hold of something perhaps tangible, um, 
maybe a mashpia, maybe a, a, a learning class, but how does she bridge this paradox in her life and say, okay, I'm going to change my glasses. I'm going to put on Mashiach Dika glasses. And that's how I'm going to, you know, I'm waking up in a dark tunnel, but no, I'm going to remove that, those glasses, and only going to see the Mashiach in it and the positive in it and the Abish in it. So this is the croc, the main part of the Sikh that we're heading to. And that is that we have a Rebbe, Bar Hashem. That's the answer. In a nutshell, Baruch Hashem, we have a Rebbe. And we should say that every single day, every single minute. Because the Rebbe, the Nasi of the generation, is the one who we turn to that actually gives us the vision, gives us the strength, and also gives us the practical tools how we could live with the Abishter's reality, with that Mashiachic reality, every minute, every day. Each one in our own situation, each one that Hashem blessed us with, each one in our own place in the world, each one with our own status, whatever it is, we have, the Rebbe is the one who feeds us, not only Raya Mehemna, not just gives us that Amuna in Hashem, but actually gives us those practical tools, which is, this is the theme of the Sikh of Allah ben Azariah as we head into Yuchfat. I just remember the, the days, you know, I grew up uh, and Baruch Hashem, I was like, even though I didn't live in New York, I lived in Montreal, but uh, plenty of times we traveled to Montreal. And I must tell you, I always, to as New I be, to New York, excuse me, to see, to be with the Rebbe. And I must say, like, when I was a child, I didn't realize the Mr. Snefesh of my parents, especially my mother, to schlep us little kids in that station wagon on those trips. And we were nauseous. It was before the days of Ziploc bags. We would have those baggies and like, hold our noses. But we went to the Rebbe and the greatest gift that our parents give us to, to, that we were able to live with the Rebbe and travel with the Rebbe, this is our, our, our greatest, the greatest gift parents gave gift to children, how we could live with the Rebbe because the Rebbe is the one who gives us those tools, hands on until today. So Yud Shvat was the highlight. Yud Shvat is the day the Rebbe became Rebbe, the Al Shvat, whichever one you want to choose. And we went, the whole high school went and was celebrating the Nasius of the Rebbe. So coming on to your chat to me, like doing the sikh is almost like reliving the moments that we say, Ashreinu, now we do have the tools. We just have to make the connection. We just have to make that connection. So in this sikh, how does the Rebbe bring it out? So the Rebbe focuses on, you can think it's a sikh of Shmois, it talks about the Sismetrayim. So the Rebbe is focusing on a piece of the Haggadah. But which piece does the Rebbe choose? A piece that talks about what is a Rebbe the piece of Rebbe Elazar ben Azariah. So the Rebbe expounds, we said in short about Elazar ben Azariah, but the Rebbe asks more questions. Why is it important for us to know that he had to be 70 years old, even though he was 18? Number two, what are we learning about his name? We know when the Mishnah quotes a name, there's something in the name that teaches us something to understand this whole story, right? Number three, let's explain what it means, Rehavi Limay Mashiach. And why is it so important to know that the story happened the day that it became Nasi? What about the day before, the day after? And then the story about the opening, the doors of this, the hallway of study, the base medrash before Rabbi Gamaliel, I think it was, only allowed students who were like inside and outside, you know, they're of a very high quality. They could come and study Taira. But Rabbi Lazar Ben Azariah, this Nasi that we're talking about, everybody is welcome. Every year it has access to the Rebbe, direct access in the same base medrash. Every year, every year it gets the same tools. How lahavi l'maysa mashiach. It doesn't matter. You're outside, you're inside, you're up ground, background, this ground, whatever it is. Every year it has access straight to the Nasi Hadar. So first of all, just like Rebbe Lazar ben Nazaria, the day he became Nasi, he said his mission statement. His mission statement is, Her, yidin, we are going to live Mashiach Dik whether it's day by you, whether it's night, Gehovi, we could introduce and we could bring Mashiach, the light of Mashiach, the feeling of Mashiach, the connection to Mashiach every day, whether it's light for you, whether it's dark for you in the moments of Golos, we, I'm, me, the Rabbi, the Nasi Adar, I will give you the tools. I'll teach you that in the darkness of Golos, you are already bringing forward and ushering in Mashiach through every thought and every deed and every word that you speak. Not only that, not only can you bring Mashiach in the Golos, 
but living with this mentality actually brings Mashiach faster. Lahavi, it ushers in, not just that we're bringing Mashiach into the Golas, while we're giving in Golas, we're living with a Mashiach mentality, but living this type of mentality, the result is that we're actually going to bring the light of the Shekhinah in this world. And what happened on Yutzvat, the whole Maimer Basigogani, the Rebbe also introduced that mission statement. We, the Dar Hashvi, collectively, we have the Koyach, we are going to bring the Shekhinah Dogamata. Down here, we're going to connect the Shekhinah, the Shekhinah or the, the, the Shekhinah is the feminine energy where we actually feel, it's not just something above us, it's something that we can connect to, that we're going to feel the Evishter, not just in a, 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 a way of Lamaila, a heavenly way, but down here, in our Tachtainim, in our lowest of the low, in our darkest moments, in our darkest settings, we are going to access the light of the Shechina, and that is the Rebbe's mission, the, through the Batei Chabad, through the Sichis, through the Mifzayim, every the whole focus was, and is, uh, until the revelation of Mashiach any second, is this concept of making the Abishter real. So we'll answer those few questions. Yes, do you want to remind me, Suri, what are the questions? You spoke about the ayin, the shivit, why it was so important for us to know that, um, that he was specifically 70 years old. We know that he was 18 years old. <laughs> so that was a important um, question that we need to um, develop. And why specifically on the day that he became, the, uh, uh, he, he, he taught Taira the, all, every single day of his life, specifically the day he became a Nasi, this is the sugya that he chose to develop. So the second question we answered, because his mission statement is that me, the Rebbe, the Nasi of this door, this is my mission, and this is what I'm going to help you to do, like the Rebbe as well. Now back to the 70. And uh, so first of all, it's interesting that uh, the Friedrich the Rebbe also lived 70 years. The Rebbe made that connection. Um, 70 means that all your seven faculties of your hum humanity, of a human existence, your seven midas are completed. And that it's a, it are, are complete. They're complete and transformed into Kedusha. And that is what a Nasi is. A Nasi, a Nasi already did that job. And the Nasi already took all his seven faculties and connected them completely to the Abishur. And that is why the number 70 is important. But the number 70, the letter 70, the gematria or the letter is Ayin. Ayin means an eye, a vision. Because this is the job of the Nasi Ador to help us put on the right glasses. That when we see Golos, we don't see Haman. We don't see, oh, I'm in Golis, there's no way. If Hashem put me here, I have to live in a Golis mentality. Now we turn, the, uh, the Nasi gives us a different pair of glasses. And now we say, oh, this moment is not a Golis moment. I will use this moment in Golis as an opportunity to bring the Abishter in, into this moment, into this space. Ayin, by looking with Mashiach Dika eyes. And it's interesting at the end of the Sikha, it makes a small connection, but to me it was so powerful. We, we say um, Yitzis and Shem is connected to Shema Yisrael. We, the mitzvah, in fact, even women, it's more important for a woman to say Vayoymer, the third parsha of Shema, that talks about Yitzis and Shem, that's a chi of Daraisa, more than even saying Vahayim Shemaya. Because Yitzis and Shem is Pasha the So Yitzis and Shem we say when we say Krishma. And it's interesting when we say Shema Yisrael, the word Shema, Shin Mem Ayin, that Ayin is huge. It's a big Ayin. So when we say Shema Yisrael, we have to remember, Ayin, how am I looking? Ayin, eyes. How am I looking at this world at this moment today? I, am, I, am I going to look, <coughs> am I going to look at this world with Golis eyes? Or am I going to look at this world with Gaula eyes? And who gives it that Koyach? It's the Rebbe. I per, um, it's the Rebbe. And we have to remember every day to thank the Abishter that we have, that we have that connection to the Rebbe, that it's not just the great tzaddikim or the generation or the great tamid chachamim or the great chassidim or the great mekosharais and chassidois, how do you say tamidois, chachamois and tzikoniois or whatever the females we're talking to. Every single person, every single year, the base Medrash doors were open wide on the day that he accepted the Nisias, that there's direct access. The Rebbe is in direct access for every single year no matter where we stand, no matter what level we are, we have an opportunity, Ayin, 
to seize every moment and make it a Mashiach like a moment that the Rebbe brings in from the Rambam, that the whole world is um, in a balance, like a scale. One deed, one deed, one Mashiach the deed, one deed, one Machshava, one Dibur, one Maisa, when we choose, are we going to look at it this way or we'll look at it that way? When we choose to make this moment, an Abishter moment, a, a Tyra moment, a Neshama moment, that could be tipping the whole scale. You made reference that when the Rebbe, when when a, when a name is used, the name is also powerful. And so you said you're going to develop, um, uh, you're going to say, explain what the Rebbe says about the name. Right. Of- so it's interesting that um, it, it, this, again, if you know a little bit of Russian Kaidish, it's like a chap. Wow. El Ozar. Ozar comes from Azer. Hashem is helping you. Ben Azaria. Again, Ezer, Yudke, whether it's the Kale, where, the, where there's a Yudke, different types of revelations of the Abishter, the job, uh, the Abishter gives a Nasi the power to help the Jewish people, and he transfers that power, he helps us as well, that we could help ourselves look at, the, at, at our experiences in Mashiach the Kawai, and we see it right there in the name. So um, the Rebbe points that out. <coughs> Just, uh, an, uh, you know, we, we talk about a Nasi and we know that a Nasi is very central in our lives. How do we, um, you know, we're talking to we're talking now to Lubavitcher women here on this uh, Zoom meeting, but the Nasi is who I call it's it's a Nasi of the Dar. And so how do we bring these messages to the world, perhaps? in preparation for Yitzvah, in preparation for Mashiach, in preparation to look at the world through Mashiach Dika eyes, we do have some kind of a responsibility because we know, when you know, when you know Aleph, you have to teach Rebbe to all of us. You have to teach Aleph. So now we own this Sikha. We know this Sikha. We're learning this Sikha. We have tools. To learn. How do we learn, live with it so that we can give it over to others? And that's, I mean, you have here Shlukas from all over the world that. Um, would you know now can bring Mashiach, Mashiach is, is, is a word a, a word that we can bring to the table we don't have to be afraid and we need to just perhaps have some more tools to know how to translate this and make everybody understand that yes we have a Nasi but it's the Nasi of the world so first of all um, I think um, Hashem created different people relating to different things so I could, everybody could take their unique personality, their unique makeup, and what talks to them, there's something for you that the Rebbe gave you. If action talks to you, you'll focus, even like the Rebbe said, when we give tzedakah, we should say, right now I'm giving tzedakah. You just say those few little, a few little words, a reminder, I'm giving, every day you give tzedakah anyways. You add those sentence at chazal, it could be an action. Some people, when they talk, and the Rebbe says we should learn in Yanegu Mashiach in groups. When we, when we do learning together in groups, like we're doing now, there's a discussion, there's a back and forth, people share ideas. Sometimes talking about it in groups will help us. For some people, learning is important. For me personally, I, I, every one of the Rebbe Sichas, to me, is this message of bringing, making the Ebishter real. So for me personally, because I, I was Zeicha to learn the best teacher I ever have, is the Rebbe, I know the Sichas that I heard directly from the Rebbe, I, I, I connected them in a much different way than the Sichas that I just read, but still, it's so important to learn, um, to learn. In fact, I, I just, um, so I, I personally connect more to the learning because when we learn and when we study Chabad, it starts from our mind and from our mind, it infuses us in a pianistic way. And there's so many Sichas, you know, it could be the Sichas of Nun Beis, Nun Alpha, Nun Beis that t- directly talk about Mashiach, and that the Tut Alt campaign is doing a wonderful job to make it connective, to make it user-friendly, not just its alumnus, but how it affects my everyday life. But any Sikha from the Rebbe, really, the, every Sikha of the Rebbe really has this message <coughs> of how we make the Abish the real in everyday life. It's interesting, you know, there's, uh, I want to also publicly thank, I don't know if anybody here is listening, two years ago when it was Shivim Shana, there's a group of Chassidim that created a project in Kutu Sikhas that every week we study two Sikhas, 
and uh, and we, we it was right after the Simasha. So it was like a very nice thing that in seven years or eight years, if you have two sikhs a week or three sikhs a week, we'll finish the entire work of the sikhs. And because I have such a deep connection to the Rebbe Sichas, I decided, I, I'll, let me do this. But I decided I'll take a chavrusa. Now this, chav, and that, there's a website and you could learn the whole sikha in depth. And there's a woman saying the sikha and there's men. There's a 10 minute synopsis, a two minute vartaira. There's like a, a Russian, Spanish, a, a different languages. Like a, there, it, it, you could read it inside with the translation. There's so many options, short, long, you know. Any style, project of Kota Sichas, you can learn Sichas from the Rebbe, user-friendly, audio, podcast, alamises. But it's interesting that I took a Chavrosa, and after a while, after a month or two, and they never went to Kota Sichas before. And after all, they said, you know, every single Sichas is the same message. It's all about making the Eibster real in this world. And it was like, it's so true. It doesn't matter which Sicha you learn. Every Sicha, every time the Rebbe spoke, the Nasi Adar is helping us to make our reality when we're going to actually see the Abish's existence and our whole way of thinking. How in the world could we do this? Because why? Because we're not human beings. We're connected to something higher. We're higher than nature. Kivsa Achas, right? The, the Jewish nation is like one lamb among 70 wolves. 70 wolves are going to, how do you say, devour? I don't know how that word is in English. They're going to swallow up this one little nebuch a sheep among 70 wolves, wolves in the way of nature. That's how it is. But that little sheep is not a sheep. That little sheep is connected to the Abishter and is above nature. And it could be 70 wolves surrounding this one sheep. But if she views herself as a sheep, nebuch she'll be scared. Oy vey, I'm surrounded by 70 wolves. How can I survive? It's never going to work. I, I'm, I'm dead already. But if she reminds herself, I look like a sheep on the outside, but I'm not a sheep. I'm connected to something that's ain't safe. And when I connect to the power of ain't safe, there's no end to the goodness and the miracles and what I could accomplish because I'm not going with my own koiches. I'm connecting to the part of me that's totally higher than nature. And that connection of knowing Hashem put me in this situation that whatever happens in my life, because this is the place where I'm going to, this is the place that needs to bring the Abishter inside this place, this situation, whatever it is, we have to start to think the way the Rebbe is. I, that's, I, just, I just want to say that, Shkocha Pratis, maybe sorry you want to read the Hayyam Yom, but the story from the Deher, so my father was describing how the Rebbe, when he uh, he um, started the Nesiyas, before the Rebbe, the children were almost like invisible. There were very, very few children in Lubavitch. And, the food, and, and, you know, the kids were kind of like, you know, not to be seen, not to be heard. They didn't belong by Fabrengans, et cetera, et cetera. And it was the Rebbe who began that direct connection, even to children, even to young children and little children. And the Rebbe also was direct connected to the children, to the woman, spoke directly to women, not through the men, every, every type. So, the, so the, my, in one little incident connected to this, this when, when, when the beginning of the Sikha, the Rebbe brought the Medrash, of um, that, uh, that when we that the names of the Shvatim were mentioned because the names of the Shvatim were mentioned because each one is Al Shem Hagaula, right? I want to mention that the Rebbe mentioned the second Medrash that uh, that why are we mentioning the twelve Shvatim? Because the Rebbe says the Schos, the Medrash says the Schos, why they deserve to be redeemed is because Loi Shino Hashemam, that the same Jewish names that they came into the Golas with. They didn't change their names, and they came out of Golas with those same Yiddish names. <coughs> so it's interesting that this, um, when my father went into Yechidus before, I think before his bar mitzvah and was Shmois time, so the Rebbe said this Advar Torah, but the Rebbe added something that actually connects it to the first Medrash. And the Rebbe said, why, this, the Rebbe said, why are the names mentioned? Because um, they'll, um, they're able to, um, they kept the names. So, but then the Rebbe asked, why does a Medrash bring two examples, Reuven and Shimon? Like Reuven went to Mitzrayim, Reuven left Mitzrayim. Shimon went to Mitzrayim and Shimon left to Mitzrayim. What do we learn from the fact that the, <coughs> that the Medrash mentions these two names? So the Rebbe says, Reuven means Re'iya, that we have to see Elokos, and Shimon means Shmiya, that we have to hear their heron, we have to absorb the concept of Elikus. Only through Re'iya and Shmi of Elikus can we actually pick ourselves up and go out of our own Mitzrayim. And then the Rebbe explained, you're living in America, you're living in Mudechoyo. 
the only way to uplift yourself from a triumph is through learning Chassidus. Because Chassidus is the Re'i of Alekos, and Chassidus is the Shmi of Alekos. So even though this is not directly said in the Sicha, but it says exactly right before I started this year, this is what I read. I said, Ashkocha Pratis, I'm a Sheikh, take a moment, it's going to help a woman. When we learn the Rebbe's Chassidus, this is what helps us not be sunk in Mitzrayim, but actually see the Abishter in our Mitzrayim. So what you're suggesting is really that we need to learn, learn, learn. And we have, it's so accessible for us. The Sikhs are here and today they are in every language and they're broken down for us and they're made available. And we don't have to be embarrassed to give it over to our counterparts, to our associates, to our uh, to our mushpayim. Uh, and, and say it the way it is. This is the Rebbe's Taira, and this is what the Rebbe says. And the Rebbe always goes back and refers to every commentary Shabbat Eilam. And uh, he doesn't just, and, and then he comes to the conclusion, what does Hasidah say? What does the Rebbe have to say? And, and we see how everything really comes together. So really for us to live with Mashiach, Mashiach the lenses, the Rebbe's lenses is to go back to the Sichas and to learn and every sikha, like you say, is the same thing. It's all about how to, we, in the parasha, we find Mashiach. And that's what add, it says. I think when you give people this reality, I see it with my students, like, especially when these questions come up, like, how could I not go to college? I'll make so much more money like this. And, and we step back <clears> and say, what is the, like, whose money is it in the first place? If you're meant to get the money, Hashem will send it. If you're doing it the right way, some yichidim, you know, do have to go to college the right ways, you'll get the Hashem's bracha through that. And if you're doing, and if you're not doing it the right way, it's Hashem's money. Like you will lose money too. You know, the idea of how the Abish it's so refreshing and it brings in the utmost security, myself included. Every time. So the Sikhs, you're saying, how could you teach people? When people see how it feels, it's so comforting and it's so, it brings such security and brings such simcha. Simcha. We don't have to be anxious. All this anxiety. Why are we being anxious? You know, there's no reason to be anxious. Hashem is right here with me. Hashem understands. Hashem knows I'm doing my best. You know, this was a conversation I had with myself. I was fretting. I was shaking. Like, how am I going to do this? I never did, did this before. I, I could open up and talk about marriage, but then back I do it in my sleep also, you know? But this was so like, whoa, am I, I saying the Rebbe's message? And I had to step back and say, where's this voice coming from? Is this the Yitzhahara trying to make me anxious and I shouldn't do it? And if only if it's the best and it's only if it's perfect, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Or I'm just trying to do my best. And Hashem is right here with me. And hopefully one year with another year, two natural kiss over one natural Bahamas, we'll go in the right direction. Like, calm down. We're all in it together. We're all trying to tap, take steps forward. Some of us will take, you know, I don't know if you remember that game that you play with your kids. Mommy, mother, mother, may I take a step? So some of us are going to take a little tippy toe step. And some of us are going to take a giant leap. But every one of us is going to do one little movement forward. We're inching out or springing out from a goalless mentality and looking forward really very immediately we'll actually have a far bringing with the Rebbe and we'll hear the Terech HaDosham Iti Teitze. So it's 9.30 mm -hmm. Bar Hashem. I think the shir is over unless there's, I don't know what we're supposed to do next. I just want to uh, <laughs> say that for furthering your knowledge and to be able to facilitate everything that we've learned today, which thank you so much, Sarla, despite your coffee. I wish you would have a drink with you um, and, and feeling uh, not a great, wonderful. <laughs> um, Sarla gave everything, her whole kaychas to teach us. But every sikha, no matter how many times you learn it, there, every time you learn it, there's something new that you missed. So it's like, it's, it's, a, it's, a en it's endless and it, there's so much there for us to learn. However, the Mashiach office um, created this unique program, which is called, again, for those that missed it, Event in a Box, and making it so available for us to be able to um, bring these messages to our community, to ourselves, to our families, to, uh, to anybody that we make contact with. And so um, all you have to do is to go online and to actually subscribe. It's, and when, when you will subscribe, what will you get? you will see a 65 page curriculum by JLI in <coughs> English explained in an incredible way, a Dvar Taira sheet, implementation cards. How can I implement these messages into my life and make it real? 
customizable event program and flyers that you can actually advertise your programs, decor ideas. Imagine decor ideas, how I'm going to decorate my room and beautifully done video, which will explain the Sikha. And again, this is a six month project. Every month, they're going to choose another Sikha from Tafshinun Bays, which will help you. You know, the more we learn, the more we start living what we learn and behaving like that, which we've learned. So it's all about learning, 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 and uh, bringing it down to each and every one of us. So l'chaim to all of you. And in this is a an, beautiful preparation for Yutzvat. We know that one has an obligation to prepare for that Chag. The Rebbe did um, tell us, ask us to prepare and his request was to have a Mashpia. So this would be a great opportunity to perhaps make Achlatis and tune into Mashpia and maybe learn like a Chavrusa, a Mashpia, ask how you could um, how you, how the Mashpia can help you see everything that you go through daily through the lenses of the Rebbe the, to, uh, uh, in a Mashiach mindset. And um, yes, I thank you all for joining us and um, looking forward to the next one with sorry, the Rebbe. Yes. Sorry, do you want to read the Hayyim Yom just to end off? The truth is that I don't have it with me. If you no, have I have it, here. Yes, I have your Hayyim Yom. Okay. I read it in Yiddish. It's just when I woke up this morning, I read the Hayyim Yom. I said, wow, like this is like Hashkoch yeah, I got a message at 7.06 a.m. Look at the Hashkoch Pratis from Sarah Lamarazov. <laughs> Mesichas, so um, here, a quote from the Friedrich Rebbe, Yitzias Mitzrayim is there a race game for Mitzar Mogavuim. Yitzias Mitzrayim is every individual's personal departure from limits and boundaries. Beyond this, Hasidus enables us to free ourselves from the limits and boundaries of this material world. Like in the words of the Rebbe, on Hasidus is if a race game from a race game for the Mitzar Mogavuim from Welt. And then the Rebbe continues, as is for Anna Hefresh, there's a difference. Yitzis Mitzrayim is an Indian from Shviro and Aziva. There's one aspect of going out of Mitzrayim where you have to break and you have to leave it behind and you have to run away from it. That's regular Mitzis Mitzrayim, is that negativity. Go, oh, this is bad. Ugh. But then we have the, the with Chassidus, we have a Mashiach mentality of Mitzrayim. And what is this? There's Yitzis Mitzrayim from Chassidus. It's a whole different thing. It's beer and tikkun. Yetzio from Mitzram on Gvon from Welt, aber in Welt, which means, um, so versus without Chsidis, Mitzrayim is about, involves shattering worldliness and abandoning it. They did not leave Mitzrayim. But in contrast with learning Chsidis and undergoing a spiritual Yetzis Mitzrayim, in the Chsidic sense, it involves refining and rectifying, which means liberating oneself from the limits and boundaries of the world while remaining in this world. We don't have to break and we don't have to focus on the negativity. What is this? In other words, while being involved in this world, that paradox, one ought to constantly aspire to be outside of its boundaries. One must remove the confinements and restraints and perceive the MS, the truth, that the world itself, in fact, is good. For after all, this is what Hashem wants, Hashem's will. And this perception may be attained through the spiritual avoida that is explained in Chassidus. So this is just, it was just so fascinating that um, this is um, the Hayyam Yem of today while we're trying to explain this thought. I want to give a little tefillah. I hope uh, that I was able to give it over the, the Rebbe wants, but there's not one way, one way you're welcome to have this experience yourself. Uh, download from Tut Alts. It's so nice to see Sikhs in English, JLI. I don't know who was so involved in, in, in translating to English and making the explanations. You can mamish see it for yourself in a user-friendly way. You can learn it with your family. You can enjoy it together. And I'm sure there's a message uh, that the uh, that, that Elazar ben Azariah, you know, just learning the Rebbe Sikhs in itself is an azer, a help, it's a siyata deshmaya that we should be able to actually accomplish uh, what we're yearning, yearning for every day and every minute. And I just want to say, L'chaim, L'chaim, that um, again, L'chavi, that one little woman doing one little L'chavi, bringing a, uh, a, 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 a <coughs> excuse me, a light of Elokos in this moment, in this day, will actually usher in this Galas of Melchah Mashiach that happened today, right now. 
I'm not saying a good to nacht. A good to tog. I'm a shir to get tog. To everybody, to one and all. Bravo, bravo. Thank you so much to all of you for joining us. Tutouts.com forward slash women. And use that. They have so much material. Chaparain. Nemes Mbedehent. It's free if you want to do it virtually. And if you want to pay, it's so minimal. It really, <coughs> really will um, help you um, in your programming, in your life. And L'chaim to all of you. May we all be gesund. And we, we dance to Mashiach now. Thank you so much.